On August 29, 2023, Manipur's Legislative Assembly met for 11 minutes. It was the first time after violence rocked the state since May 3. In doing so, the government led by N.B. Rain Singh checked a constitutional box but met with protest from supporters and critics alike. The double-engine government of Narendra Modi and N. Birin Singh bashed on regardless. After initially saying no way, Manipur Governor Anusuya Uike convened a one-day assembly session. It's a rare scenario not just for Manipur but anywhere in India. Analysts say that the aim was to give the impression of a functioning state, not adding any fuel to the growing chorus for President's rule in Manipur. The session lasted 11 minutes, including a two-minute silence after obituary references. Then, the chief minister said he would not discuss the situation in the state, as the matter was sub judice. Unlike the norm, the session wasn't broadcast live either. The BJP held a press conference after the session was adjourned. It accused the six opposition MLAs of creating chaos with noise. Virain and his people in the assembly outnumbered the opposition 44 to 6. Having presided over the creation of internal borders in the state and failing to control ethnic violence that has led to mass displacement, deaths and widespread destruction, the least the BJP legislators could have done was handle a bit of noise. It's also worth noting that in the Manipur assembly, even the opposition MLAs are mete. The 10 cookie MLAs did not attend the session for fear of death by lynching in Imphal, which is out of bounds for the Kukizo tribes. In the newspapers, Birin Singh has appealed to the Mete to unite and arrive at a consensus, but in the House, where the elected representatives of the community are meant to work exactly on that, he had no time for discussion. Later in that evening, tens of thousands took to the streets in protest. What changed over the past four months? Sitaram Yachuri of the CPIM, who visited Manipur recently, had this to say. Rahul Gandhi is the first time he went to Manipur. He said that the two months ago, 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 he said that and this is very important for our country to say that our country has made such a big challenge and challenge that has been created. What is the solution of it? And what is the purpose of it? While the Assembly adopted a resolution full of platitudes for Birain Singh, another seven people were killed and others injured in gunfights. It was the first time that the Assembly adopted a resolution full of platitudes for Birain Singh, another seven people were killed and others injured in gunfights. It marked a sharp contradiction to Birain's assertions of peace. In the next part of this video, we will evaluate the Modi Shah Bireen Triumvirate's promises. First, crimes against women. India turned its eyes to the problem fleetingly after a video of a mob sexually assaulting two Kukizo women went viral. In response, the PR machinery of the BJP government at the centre swung into action. The Prime Minister made a vague 30-second statement on the video. Manipur ki jo ghatna saamne aai hai, किसी भी सभ्य समाज के लिए यह शर्मसार करने वाली घटना है मैं सभी मुख्यमंत्रियों से आग्रह करता हूं कि वे अपने राज्य में कानून व्यवस्थाओं को और मजबूत करें और मैं देशवासियों को विश्वास दिलाना चाहता हूं किसी भी गुनहगार को बख्शा नहीं जाएगा मणिपुर की इन बेटियों के साथ जो हुआ है इसको कभी माफ नहीं किया जा सकता the following testimonies reflect the scale of the violence in Manipur and crimes that women have faced in the state since May 3 and how nothing has changed for many of them. Her husband Joshua was working in Borwell as a laborer in Senapati. He came back from Senapati on 3rd May uh, by bus. Mm. So uh, a mob stopped the bus. He was sitting uh, 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 in the window side. Then they were checking mob of people there in Moirang. Mm -hmm. And Joshua and, and his friend were pulled out from the, uh, from the bus. Uh, they were beaten, but his friend was saved by 
uh, Meitei Pangal Muslim mm. group. But for him, um, they, could, they, they could not save him. He was beaten up. Mm. But there was a policeman who saw him and took him to the police station. From police station, he called his wife and narrated the story mm. of how he was uh, pulled out from the house, uh, from the bus, lynched, beaten, and how the police saved him. But well, even when he was in police station, he, he, he did not feel secured. He told his wife uh, that this could be our last telephone communication. So since he did not hold a phone, mm. uh, it was difficult to contact him. Mm. And they contacted the police, mm. but the police could not give her accurate information. And since then, she, she did not know his whereabouts. Till today, there was no stress of him. He did not, she did not know whether he's dead, he's alive, or anything. It's been almost two months now mm. since she spoke to him. She lodged an fire to Charachanpur uh, police station, but Charachanpur police station could not help her find them. She was unable to explain her grief. Uh, she's really lost hope. But her worry is that he's the bread earner. They have a children. Mm. Before uh, she was married to him, he had uh, a first wife and have four children. So with the four children and the baby, he was worried how he would uh, continue to survive. He sustain her livelihood. Mm. You all may be aware of the happenings. See, we haven't seen this act of inhuman in our lifetime. See, more than 122 people, innocent people were killed. They were not killed in the uh, what firing and all. They were killed in innocent. So I want to really ask a big question to the Manipur government. When here, along with the help of the Assam Rifles as well as the Central Security Forces as well as the police personnel and uh, security forces, we saved the, so many lives of the Manipuris. But our people who are there in far, why cannot their life be saved? What have they, run, they done wrong? On the health front, volunteers and relief workers in Manipur say women face the worst of the ongoing conflict. In just one district, Churachandpur, with a Kuki majority population, over 100 relief camps still operate. They house 6,500 women and close to 3,500 children. These include hundreds of new mothers and pregnant women. Home Minister Amit Shah promised medical teams would go to the hill districts, but not one team has arrived. From 3rd May till now, we don't get any support from the government, the state government. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than that, we get the support from uh, for, uh, some for, from foreign funding and from individual donations. Mm -hmm. Individual and donations includes uh, donations from our close families and friends. And we, are, we also try and we are still trying our best to raise funds for these IDPs who are in the camps mm -hmm. and those there are also some IDPs who are not in the camp mm -hmm. but who are in a rented house or maybe in their family's mm -hmm. relatives house. Mm -hmm. And with regards to the challenges that we face, uh, see there are more than 90 camps that we've covered mm -hmm. and uh, uh, all they need is food, rice, uh, rice, dal mm -hmm. uh, and then other basic needs. Mm -hmm. So we could not provide them every day. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, one of the most challenges that we face, mm. uh, but those are their, their needs. Mm. In, in one camp, the uh, maxim, a minimum number of uh, inmates are uh, 90, uh, 30 mm. and a maximum uh, 700. So we could not provide them every day, so that is one of the most challenges that we face, mm. uh, but their demand is high. 
we need lots of fun maybe or support for relocating these IDPs maybe for for the spot also we just can't imagine where the, all these 12,000 people will stay. Since May 3, mobile internet has also been blocked in Manipur, across districts, even those where no violence has occurred. No government official has addressed the complete illegality of this ban. As per the telecom rules, internet bans cannot be indefinite and all-encompassing and have to be reviewed every five days. In Manipur, the orders to ban the internet were issued in templatized format bearing the same file numbers from May 3 till today. The order was issued by the Home Commissioner. For weeks, no review committee was formed and when one committee was formed, the Home Commissioner himself headed it. This violates the Supreme Court's directions in the Anuradha Bhaseen case and the fundamental rights of Manipuri people. Only the rich and the powerful of Manipur can access the internet today. The state government has kept its connection with the 21st century intact, but it has plunged all others into the pre-internet age. When the Prime Minister showcases UPI platforms to G20 delegates, it won't mention the 4 million Indians banished from Digital India. IT Standing Committee unanimously adopted a report saying that, see, uh, just like a drop of a hat, you should not bring in internet shutdown. Because on the other count, government says that it's a digital India. On the other side, you say that, see, uh, internet shutdown can be resorted to. Now what is happening? There is an IT standing committee. There are Supreme Court judgments. See, this is a time when internet is absolutely part of your life. Nothing was And livelihoods. Yeah. You pushing a community, pushing a state, pre-pre-information era, it's like taking people to a cave. It has got cascading effects. That's why we deliberated on these internet shutdowns elsewhere and came to the conclusion that there should be a due process which should be followed before bringing internet shutdown. There should be a discussion. It should not be left, left to an officer like a Tahsildar to resort to internet. It's like somebody telling you, tomorrow you will not have oxygen, tomorrow you will not have food, tomorrow you will not have water. It's as good or as worse like that. So can you imagine that you see a state is plunged into darkness, pushed to, pushed relegated to a pre-information era for almost three months. On August 29, the government gave itself another gift. It decided to whitelist the mobile numbers of a host of officials while people languish. Broadband internet has been restored, but an undertaking has to be signed assuring the government that sharing information the state does not like will be treated as a leak punishable by law. The order to restore broadband services was also discriminatory. In Manipur, the internet penetration is not just extremely low, it is mostly restricted to the Imphal Valley or other major urban centres. The Manipur High Court has been hearing five petitions on this matter. The petitioners say the state is violating all legal procedures. And finally, this is why Home Minister Amit Shah said in Parliament that B. Rain Singh has not been sacked. They say, Why didn't you put 356 तब लगती है जब हिंसा के समय राज्य सरकार कोऑपरेट न करे हमने डीजीपी बदल दिया उन्होंने भारत सरकार के डीजीपी को स्वीकार कर लिया हमने चीफ सेक्रेटरी बदल दिया उन्होंने भारत सरकार के चीफ सेक्रेटरी भेजे हुए चीफ सेक्रेटरी को मैं यही कह रहा हूं समझ न हो तो नहीं आएगी भी सीएम तब बदलना पड़ता है जब कोऑपरेट न करे ये सीएम कोऑपरेट कर रहा है Big question then is, why are the Indian Army and the Assam Rifles unable to operate freely in the state to this day? Independent sources in the police establishment, Army and the Assam Rifles officers and our on-ground experience in Manipur after this conflict reflects a severely compromised security establishment. Manipur police officers have been involved in attacks on Koki villages. Locals in the valley regularly impede the movement of the army and assigned rifles columns. 
these are the locals who the chief minister claims are his supporters. Time and again, reinforcements and quick reaction teams fail to reach locations where fighting breaks out because large numbers of civilians block their path. The narrative that the army and the Assam rifles are against the Mete has its roots in the Mera Paibi's historic resistance to the AFSPA in Manipur. It is also driven by a deep-rooted ideology of Mete nationalism. This history has been weaponized by those who orchestrated the current violence to strengthen the mobs and give them impunity. Senior officers, company commanders and the troops they lead all voiced serious concern over the environment they are operating in and the inability of civilian administration and police to become a bridge. The situation that we are failing, uh, facing in Manipur is very unprecedented. Uh, we have never faced anything of this kind uh, in our long years of uh, history. Uh, I think the biggest challenge is uh, the large number of weapons that are out uh, with in both the communities. The society has become weaponized uh, unless these weapons come back in whatever way they can. Uh, this challenge will remain the biggest. Related to this is the minds of uh, both the communities. Today, uh, there's so much against each other, it's so corrupted. This needs to be stalled. There is a need for realization to come for the people that the only way forward is peace. They have to talk, they have to get back to negotiations. Uh, other challenges, of course, for us are many. You would have seen that in the media has been covered in ample measure of road blockades being done. Um, logistics at times for our forces itself, we are not able to send movement of troops are being hampered at times. Um, so these are things which uh, have not happened on such scale. Um, and let's hope we are able to get over these. Four months into the conflict, buffer zones are in place in Manipur, drawing lines that divide the state's people. It's four months since 3rd of May, the Chief Minister has asserted having been in touch with Kuki legislators, but he has not spoken to those who, at least on paper, are still part of his ruling coalition, some of them BJP members. One legislator was beaten nearly to death in Impal. Another, a woman minister, had her residence burned down. In India's history, you'd be hard-pressed to find another instance of a chief minister with a massive mandate who's unable to engage with an entire section of his people or unwilling to take the first step. Four months into the so-called ethnic war, Manipur's tragedy is a monument to the failure of the BJP's double-engine ki sarkar. Communalism in our country has a long history and we've had many communal clashes. What's different now is that they are proud of what they do. They were ashamed of what they did earlier, but they are proud of what they do today. They're very proud of killing. And I think the central government and I think our prime minister and our home minister, you know, very, I mean, accomplished people. The prime minister won election after election after election, but that doesn't absolve you of the crimes against humanity. You might be a very good politician. You might even have the love of some section of the people. And you have won elections like other prime ministers have not. So I acknowledge that. I acknowledge that. But does that absolve you from a crime, the highest possible crime in international law, which is a crime against humanity? It does not. 